and welcome to episode 4. So, as I promised in the last episode, I am going to be testing two hot hatchbacks. And both of them are, hmm, let's say a little bit crappy, but enjoy the film. Hmm, a 1992 Ford Escort Cosworth, a coupe that looks exactly like a hatchback. Is it any good? Well, let's find out. Hmm, maybe. Because this car right here features around about 220 horsepower. Top speed is about 150. And it does not a 60 in a roundabout. Well, actually, let's find out on a straight. Well, let's test it on the straight bit here. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to count from the speed at the bottom. Right, let's go! That was around seven and a half seconds. So it's not really that quick about the same as a Toyota. Actually, this is slow, actually. For the North 60 bit. Look at everything, it's more power into it than the Toyota. I like the A6. And I tested it um, in the last episode along with that stupid Pontiac I don't like. Or was it a Plymouth? I think it was a Plymouth. Now this car does feature four wheel drive, which I which is a good thing for hot hatchbacks. Now you might be thinking, why are you testing like one of the older ones? Well that's because I wanted to see what if if an old or new hatchback is faster. So I've got this escort cosmo from nineteen ninety two to nineteen ninety seven and then another car which I'll be showing you later. But, do I like this car? Well, kind of. I mean, it sounds a little bit rubbish, but I like the single design there, because it's basically what they use in the Fiesta XR2. Or just a normal one, to be honest. From, from like the 1980s or the 90s. It does drift as well, if you take the handbrake on. Now, you, it comes in different colors, like, such as green, grey, blue, and red. Like this one, this is red. Now, if you, if you didn't have a person, Jeremy Clarkson, who was from Top Gear, he actually owned two of these, which is really funny. Now, now you can't get this one with a different signal wheel, where it's like big and fat, like with the one used in the laser, that's made by Kia. And also, um, but this one's the older version, so it contains this steering wheel that I'm with, that I have by now. This car does understeer a lot. But I thought it was really oversteer, but then I'm on the grass and as you can see, I drift. <laughs> that is not bad at all. But can I try to drift? Well, I'm around about 40 miles an hour. So I'm at 45, I'm gonna slow down. So, let's see. Okay. Wait, okay. Oh. Yeah, it's way too easy. But if you keep the power up while you're trying to turn, it will do unseer. Whoa. Sorry. Looks like it didn't do damage. The ball of it is very good. Now, this car was supposed to be a producing. Um, some lot of very heavy knots in it. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the weight of it, okay? Now, it does weigh 1.3 tons, about the same as a Toyota, so it's lots of similarities from this. Like, it's about the same, it has the same number 60 to Toyota, it weighs around the same as a Toyota, and it's a coupe, just like a Toyota. But because of the spot on the back, the big one, I mean, like the top one, it makes it look more like a hatchback, even though it's not. Now, I didn't really love this car because it's not actually an Escort, even though it's based on the Mark V Escort, it's actually a, a Sierra. You can actually kind of tell it here, it's by the front of it. There's a photograph on the right, as you can see, the, the newest Sierra, Sierra, sorry, against the Escort RS. Can you see the difference? Or the similarities? Yeah. Just, just ignore the bonnet and the lights. It's not the same cars as here, but it's just being called an escort, as you can see on the back. 
So I'm not really a huge fan of this car, and nor would I actually buy one. No idea what the price was, but I'm going to get around about fifteen, um, fifteen thousand pounds from back in 1992. But the big question is, though, can I actually get around this big circle while I'm putting the power down to ten miles an hour? Let's find out. No. Just cannot. Even going in reverse, it won't, it won't stay controllable. Yeah. This car was not actually really designed for drag racing, and because of its looks of it, it doesn't really look that fast either. It was actually being tested on Top Gear back in 2002, and Jimmy Clarkson said he actually really adored it, but I didn't really. So. A car that I kind of like a little bit more than the Ford, but only a little bit worse. A 695 Beast Cotto, made by a company called Abarth, a tuning Fiat company. Is it any good? And is it better than the Ford? Well, let's find out. <coughs> Sorry about that, I just got a little bit cold. For the last about nearly a week. Now, this car right here, okay, is probably one of the best looking, probably best looking the bath of all time. I can't like it. In fact, this car just is a lot better than the Ford, even though this is front wheel drive, and the Ford is four wheel drive. Now, this is a bath, okay, it features Oh, a turbocharged engine, which is always a good thing for a car like this. It also features something in its door window. Yep, it's just basically a cat window. Funny, isn't it? In fact, it's so funny that I find it's probably one of the funniest looking cars of all time, mostly for its door windows. Is there anything else I like about? Well, the power of it, okay? Because, despite it's not being, like, looks like it's really, really, really fast, like a supercar, like a McLaren, but, this is a 1.4 litre car, remember? So, yep. So, it weighs just under a ton, a ton, sorry, and it features a 1.4 litre turbocharged four cylinder engine, and it produces a round of. 140 kW. So, how much is that in horsepower? Well, that is actually 190. So, that's actually really, really good. <laughs> this is just a really good car. In fact, I like it a lot more than the Ford because it's more exciting. And so, a lot of things inside that makes it a little bit more of a technology future car. Now, inside the K is an old fashioned speedometer. I mean, the, the one that has the time on, on the right, okay? It also features a very stylish dashboard along with a very stylish signal that looks very similar to the one that you can get from a shop. A really cheap plastic one with no logo. Now, it, it so happens I do actually have a toy version of this, but it's actually just a standard 500 SS, not a 695B Beast Pato. Yeah. In fact, this is actually going to be the, this is actually the very, whoa, oh, sorry, God, I think I, yeah, I don't know. Sure. In fact, this is the very first car that I've driven on Forza 7. That's why you can tell that the that the track looks a little bit different because I have to drive on Forza 7 because on Forza 6 this car's not available. So that's why I have to switch to Forza 7. But that's okay because I do have the game. But I prefer Forza 6 because of because of these stupid cunts are, are in the way for my going into the second to last corner. Because I have to go like that instead of going let me go back, okay. I have to say on the tarmac, even though that I could do something else. Okay, let me show you. I could just, you know, do this. Which is what most people do. Oh! 
Yeah. <laughs> Now, actually, um, my brother's bed actually used to have one of these, but a normal Fiat 500 with flowers in the back. And I, and I thought that was really funny, but now she has a Mazda CX-5 now. And she used to have a, used to have a Seat, which is largely a Volkswagen, because, you know, of course, Volkswagen owns Seat, along with all other companies like Bentley, Skoda, Audi, Bugatti, Lamborghini, and is there any other ones? Nope, there isn't. So Volkswagen does own a lot of companies. However, can I actually go in circles and make the car spin? Even though it's from all drive. And I'm going to be saying to 50. Unfortunately though, there's not enough truck, so I've gone on the grass. Oh god. So I, I decided to switch to 20 miles an hour. Okay, so I'm going a little bit faster than what I'm supposed to be doing, but that's okay though. I'm trying to make the car spin. But I can't I can't actually make the car spin though. This car's just not really that powerful enough. Yeah. I think I'm just gonna keep my jeans forever and ever. Oh, hang on there. I think this sound feel like it's gonna be drifting. Unfortunately though, after about 15 minutes, I gave up. You know what? You won't spin, I'll make you. This this thing made me really angry, so I decided to keep trying to get it to spin. On purpose this time. But it just keeps on doing understeer, which makes me even more angry. Now, like this, like this, if you prefer overseer compared to underseer, who's with me? So I tried to keep swerving in lines to make the car feel like it's going to have to drift. But that didn't, that didn't work either. I could keep doing this through the night. And then I fell asleep. Well, I hope you enjoyed that film, but now it's time to see which one is the fastest around the track. So, we're going to bring it up to one of my favourite drivers of all time, the Valet. Fall first, and he is off. Now remember, this is the car I didn't really like and it only has 220 horsepower. So, let's see how I handle this into the first corner. Yep, oh, it hit the grass there. I think I just saw the front wheel wobble a little bit. But yep, yep, understeering a little bit there. Actually, from like the very front corvius, it makes it look more like a hatchback than a coupe into the Chicago. So, yep, even more on the steer, including the cone getting hit by there. Yep, it's swerving all over the place. Can the day get any worse with a car that's swaving? Well, Let's see how it goes into the hammerhead. Would understeer. Oh, hit a cone again, and another one. Yep, understeering really widely. Yeah, it nearly hits in the tire there, but... <laughs> that's just really, really rubbish. For a four-wheel drive car. This just acts exactly like an Audi Quattro, where you know where it does a lot of understeer. Right, here comes the tire wall. Into Bentley. Yep. Doing very well so far. Well, actually, not really. First half was rubbish. The second half looks a little bit better. Second to last corner. Yep. Oh, drifting a little bit there. And here it comes into Gambon. And more on the sea. And across the line. And now, the above. Let's see how it gets on. Now, remember, you gotta remember that this car is newer, but also a little bit less powerful than the Ford. Is it gonna be faster? Wow. Is it gonna be a lot more unsavory than the Ford? Because this is, of course, a front-wheel drive. 
said Lily to Nothing Howard. Well, that was not an energy at all. It's called um, way better than the board. Most because it's called lighter than the board. Thanks to its little 1.4 litre turbocharged engine. Yep, it's not good for the steering at all. Now remember, it might be depending on the game because this isn't Forza Motorsport 7. Let's see how it comes to the hammer page. Will it oversteer or will it do oversteer? And, yep. Oh! I thought it was an like, oh, oh, oversteering for a sec, but it didn't. <laughs> but it's just absolutely amazing! I mean, I've been going hard on Forza for about three years now. Get over it. Well, it's exactly 10 years actually, because that's when I first got my first Xbox in June 10th, 2017. Exactly three years ago. Second last corner. Yeah, all in the cone because the cones are in the way, obviously. And then into Gamble, and I cross the line. I got the times here, and you can tell that because this is filming on the floor, these two are not that fast. So let's go for the above first, which is the car I kind of like a little bit, but I'm not really a huge fan of these type of cars. So let's have a look. It, um, hang on. It did it in one thirty six point one. So I'm gonna put it there, and we'll see how that goes. And now let's get to the Ford. Yep. And I have the tie for the Ford. So let's see what it did it in. No doubt it's faster than the above 133.9. So I'm going to put it there. So, yeah. So, top gear, top tip. If you want a car that is old but cheap to buy and also probably not that much good looking, get a Ford Escort. So, and that's it, I'll be seeing you in the next episode, but there's, gonna be, there's no power that time, so it's going to be a special, so goodbye. <laughs>